Welcome to our East uh, Med Forum. Uh, this is a Skype conference. Uh, my co-host uh, is Air Commodore Andrew Lambert, and our speaker this morning uh, is Admiral David uh, Ben Bashat, uh, who will talk to us about maritime developments in the Eastern Mediterranean. Admiral, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining us. No, I said that I'm very happy to be part of uh, the conference and the seminar. Thank you very much. Uh, David, uh, tell us, what, what are the, 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 the new developments? Yeah, uh, first of all, before I start, uh, Chris, I want to uh, compliment uh, you and uh, with uh, all this initiation, I think that it's very, very important in uh, those days to discuss what's going on in our region because uh, a lot happened around us uh, from many directions and it's uh, very very wise to sit down once in a while and to discuss it and uh, <clears throat> uh, to bring the issue uh, to our conscious even we are unofficial I believe that uh, some influence from this type of discussion uh, can go to the right people. And also I believe and I want uh, and I uh, hope that uh, also the official doing the same. Um, about uh, our issue, uh, you know, 80% uh, of the economics of the world going through the oceans and the sea, and uh, in international water. And there's no uh, specific government that rule all this uh, route of communication around the world. And uh, 80% uh, uh, it's also, uh, let's say, 80% from the size of the globes and also 80% of the economics is there. That means it's very, very, very important. Therefore, always when there is uh, some threat, there are uh, official and unofficial uh, organizations that make uh, <coughs> cooperation between countries, mainly between navies. We saw it during the, the last decade, after September 11, when the terrorism, uh, uh, the global terrorism started to increase, how uh, a country gathered together and make allies, uh, like in the Strait of Malacca, in the Indian Ocean, uh, the European Union, uh, South America, uh, forces uh, like, like NATO and active endeavor uh, work in the Mediterranean. And uh, then the pirate start, and also a lot of organization around the pirate, because the world is very worried about uh, this uh, route of communication uh, for the trade of the world. Our corner, it's a very important one, one of the important, uh, let's say, area in the world, because we are gateway uh, between the Far East, Asia, and Europe, and Mediterranean, and the Black Sea, all the country around the Black Sea, all the country around the Mediterranean, and for sure, uh, the countries in uh, APAC, Asia Pacific, they need the Suez Canal, they need this uh, area. And therefore, it's become very, very important, not only for us as a neighbor's country in this region, also for country from uh, another part of the world, that their interest is that this gateway will be open and this route will be secure, like China, for example, or like Russia. And that means, uh, lately, because of the instability of uh, some country in this region, uh, mainly uh, because of the Arab uh, Spring and uh, the <coughs> The, let's say the new organi organization relatively uh, from the uh, extremely extremely uh, Islam's organization like uh, ISIS, Daesh, 
that uh, suddenly uh, raise. Uh, all this uh, factor makes some changes uh, in the region. And uh, in, in uh, let's say, in a short period, we can find a lot of things that we didn't know them in the same volume and the same magnitude before. We have the Russian in the area after many years that uh, the, their presence was very, very uh, weak. Suddenly they are strong. The Chinese, as I mentioned, they are in the in the in the in the area, and we have uh, relatively a new regime in Egypt, and uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, ISIS and Daesh in the area. Um, we have uh, the hydrocarbon, the gas. Uh, that suddenly uh, we detect in the area and uh, country start to organize the EZ, the exclusive economic zone. All, all this together and for sure the refugee that uh, uh, start to come uh, from Libya to Italy, from Turkey to Greek and uh, in a very, very big uh, numbers. Therefore, many, many factors in this relatively small small area, bring a new a situation. And we need to, first of all, to understand and to try to predict for where uh, we are going and for our countries, if they can do something to make it uh, more stabilized and to help uh, this situation. I want to go and to uh, mention every one of the factors that I said, mainly the, the country uh, in the region, because the first phenomena that most uh, of the player uh, increase their power. And uh, the only one, maybe the United States, that was uh, with big uh, pr uh, present in the, in the Mediterranean in the last decades, uh, in these days, uh, they are almost not there. Uh, and I can say maybe, uh, unfortunately. But the uh, United States, I think, uh, because uh, China, and they need to increase their presence in Asia Pacific, and also the forces that they sent against the pirates. By the way, the pirate uh, uh, issue become more weaker in those days, but the potential is there still. Then the presence of the uh, United States in the Mediterranean and in our region is not as used to be in the last decade. Uh, we don't know what will happen uh, after uh, the new president uh, will take uh, the position. Maybe uh, the policy will be changed, but right now they are the only one uh, with the player that they are uh, not increase the power, decrease the power. Then maybe I'll start with, uh, with Egypt. Egypt, uh, not a uh, rich country, but although they are not a rich country, uh, the president, Assisi, decide to increase his maritime forces. Uh, he gets some help from Saudi, but uh, he is uh, increasing the forces by new submarine, uh, uh, helicopter carrier, uh, new surface boat, and uh, uh, he invests a lot of uh, uh, effort and money that he collects from his people. And we need to salute, uh, salute the people of Egypt for this. Uh, in very short time, uh, they upgrade the Suez Canal wider it, deeper it, and now you can, uh, they can use it for uh, bigger ships, and they did it in a relatively uh, short time. That means he gave a lot of importance uh, to the maritime arena, and also I believe that he used it as a tool for uh, reflect power to his neighbor. No doubt that Egypt, like in, uh, it was in the past, and he want to be also now, a dominant uh, country in the Arab world. And one of the tools that we are using for this is to reflect power in the maritime arena. That's what country normally 
doing that's what make the emperor emperor the maritime forces and it's look like uh, 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 Egypt in these days doing a lot of effort to uh, strengthen uh, the navy and the maritime forces and also uh, fortunately for them they detect some uh, gas also in their uh, economic zone therefore they need also to protect their gas they need to protect the Suez Canal they want to reflect the power and uh, they are also under attack of the uh, ungovernmental organizations like uh, Daesh that attack even in military ships and civilian ships in their territory. That means we are seeing that Egypt did a lot of effort to be dominant in the region. This is for Egypt. Going to Israel, Israel, like Egypt, also increased the maritime power. In 2013, Israel declared on the EZ. The EZ doubled, the, let's say, the area of the country. And uh, because of this, Israel uh, only lately uh, uh, signed contract for uh, four new uh, corvettes that were built in, uh, in Germany. But not only this, uh, UAVs and unmanned platform and a lot of other uh, <coughs> tools uh, to make uh, the region that uh, increase by the size because of the, the EZ and uh, <coughs> the hydrocarbon that we uh, detect in, in uh, this region. Therefore, the, the power of Israel in the area, in the maritime area, become bigger. Israel continue to deal with the Hamas in Gaza blockade the area, not to let uh, the Hamas get any uh, weapons uh, by the sea. And uh, therefore, uh, it's required uh, uh, intensive uh, presence in this area. And the Navy and also watching the Hezbollah. Although in the Hezbollah, uh, there is a NATO maritime forces. Uh, <coughs> under the resolution 1701, uh, but Israel also watching because Nasrallah already threat Israel that if it will be required from him, he will shoot missile and he has the missile to the gas rigs in the area. Uh, therefore, for Israel, it's, uh, it's a threat and therefore they need to watch and uh, to maintain power against uh, this threat if it will happen. This is Israel, Egypt uh, growing forces, Israel growing forces. Then I'll go to Turkey. Turkey also uh, like to be a very dominant country in the region. And as I said, the maritime forces reflect power of the nation. And we are watching and we see that uh, uh, Turkey make a lot of effort to increase and use submarines and new uh, <coughs> frigate, the Milgan type and others. And therefore, there is we identified uh, efforts uh, to be dominant in the uh, maritime arena. Uh, know that the Turkey uh, also uh, show a lot of interest about gas that they don't have in their country and in their water they are looking for. But uh, we believe that the reason for uh, 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 solve the, let's say, the, the problem with Israel was, we believe, because of the gas interest. And uh, uh, no doubt about the interest of uh, Turkey in, uh, in Cyprus. Therefore, very uh, dominant uh, power in the region. Um, uh, we have the, the NATO forces uh, around, uh, many, many countries uh, take part, even Indonesia or Bangladesh, they are there uh, between Cyprus and, uh, and Lebanon. And then uh, let's uh, talk about uh, Russia. Russia that uh, was with a nice presence 
in the Mediterranean, mainly in Syria, when, when they were a Soviet Union, but after the collapse, they disappeared from the area. But now the crisis in Syria is a big chance for them to bring their forces again, and they are using it. And right now there is uh, more than 10, uh, let's say, uh, mar maritime ships in the area, and I believe that it's going uh, to increase. And they are very, very dominant, and it's a play uh, to their interest. And there is no American forces to balance it, only NATO forces. And uh, they did uh, only lately a contract with Cyprus that they can uh, stay also with ships uh, over there. And they try to be a uh, part of uh, the play in this, uh, in this region to make exercise uh, with Israel, with Greece, with uh, Cyprus, and so and so. Uh, the next country that I want to mention is China. China in the last few years they decide to take very seriously the maritime routes. Uh, they like to import from Europe, for sure also to export, but import is very important uh, uh, for them. Therefore, the Chinese government uh, draw a strategy that they need uh, to uh, take seriously uh, the maritime route from Asia, from Far East Asia to the, the Mediterranean. And they are doing it uh, in few uh, ways. One way is they increase, they double the maritime uh, 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 military forces. And uh, also they show present in the main port along the routes, like they are in Alexandria, they are in Cyprus, they are in Israel, in Haifa, and in Ashdod, in Horn of Africa. Also, there is a small fleet of uh, Chinese uh, uh, frigates and corvettes uh, in the Indian Oceans uh, fighting against uh, the pirates. And they even came to the, this region. And last year, they did exercise with the Russian in the Mediterranean and also they visit the Black Sea and, uh, and uh, also train uh, over there. I didn't mention that the Black Sea, uh, why Russia, uh, I'm jumping to Russia again because I didn't mention it. For Russia, it's very important to be in this region because of the Black Sea. To be only in the Black Sea with the Bosphorus and uh, Adama analysis, it's uh, too risky. Therefore, they need to be out of the Black Sea if they want to be sure that they can uh, maintain a free uh, line of communication uh, from the Black Sea to the Mediterranean, I believe that this is the main reason that they want to present in, in this area. And as I said, they are cooperate uh, with the Chinese and they are cooperate uh, with the other nation. That's mean uh, we can see that there is uh, many factors from different interests that playing in this uh, relatively uh, a small corner and there is a uh, two uh, issues that can leverage uh, the cooperation uh, in this region and I hope that uh, the country uh, will know how to use this leverage. One leverage is cooperation against terrorism. Uh, the maritime terrorism can be very, very dangerous and as I said, they can uh, cause uh, chaos to the world. Therefore, uh, all the countries that play in this area to cooperate uh, with intelligence, uh, to uh, be ready to make uh, together a search and rescue if it's, uh, if it's needed, uh, uh, to exchange information, to exchange doctrine, uh, not to let the, the maritime terrorism to raise. It's a very, very important one and can be leveraged for good cooperation uh, between the country. The other thing is the gas. There is gas in Egypt, there is gas in Cyprus, there are gas in Israel, there are gas in uh, Greece, uh, maybe uh, uh, there is potential gas, uh, uh, gas in Lebanon. And I believe that uh, country uh, need to cooperate, then they can uh, even use the same means 
uh, they can uh, change information, they can uh, protect it together. There is a pipeline uh, on the bottom uh, of the sea that they need uh, to share uh, together. I think that there is a big room of cooperation uh, around uh, the gas, and this is a good uh, opportunity for the neighbor country uh, uh, to cooperate together. Uh, there is the issue of the EZ that uh, not finished the process of establishment. There are few contracts already that established, but there are some area that still there is some debate around it. And I hope that the country will find the way uh, to establish it in the right way and not to not to make it as a leverage for fighting. Uh, last year, when I visit you, uh, Chris, uh, and I mentioned uh, the very the fantastic location of Cyprus in this Eastern Mediterranean, and I believe that if I take this uh, location, geographic location, and start from this to build cooperation, but already start, let's say with Israel, with Greece, to build a platform, then to bring Egypt inside. Maybe Turkey will join. Maybe Russia will be part of this. I think that this region, with the American or without them, I don't know what will be the policy of uh, President Trump when he will uh, take over, but I think that for our, the local country in this region, we, I hope that we will find a way to build the platform that we can cooperate, all of us together, around the energy resources, around the fighting against terrorism, around the search and rescue. And uh, although it's look complicated, although there are many, many partners, I believe that all of them have the same interest in the end of the day, is to make, uh, to build security from the line of communication and use the energy in the right way. And this is my hope. And as I said in the beginning, I hope that not only us, as a, let's say private people discussing it, I hope that also the official, the government, will find the way to do it. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, David. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Andrew? Admiral, thank you very much for my say-so, a very lucid exposition of uh, the situation, geopolitical situation in the Eastern Mediterranean. I've got uh, two or three questions, uh, if I may. I spoke yesterday about um, the derogation from various international treaties, notably the ICC, and of course more recently in uh, July this year, when China decided it would not accept the Tribunal of UNCLOS. Do you see there's a bit of a problem with uh, nations who have the power but are not necessarily prepared to abide by the rules of the game? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't hear what, uh, what you heard, but uh, I believe, I believe that uh, China has, uh, uh, they build uh, the forces, no doubt, they uh, are not, uh, they need it uh, for their region, there is a lot of uh, conflict over there, yeah. with India, with Japan, uh, I don't know, Vietnam, uh, America over there, but also they came uh, to, to our region, and um, in, in this region, as I said, they are already involved in uh, Egypt, in uh, Israel, in Greece, uh, cooperating uh, with Russia. I believe that if they want to maintain uh, their power so far away from their country, let's say in this region, they need to find the, the way to cooperate in the right way and in the right rules with all of us, and not uh, uh, try to make any uh, violence of the rules and. Uh, this is what I believe, if I understand you correctly. Do you think that can be achieved, though, or do you think they will just yeah, I, exercise? Do you I think, think they can? I think it can be achieved because I think that in the end of the day, it's their interest, at yeah. least here. Yeah. At least here. I, I'm not saying it about their territories, yeah. uh, economic zone, the island that they are doing. I'm not talking about their, about this region, far away from their country. If they want uh, to maintain power and influence, in this region, like they go inside to the countries. They are managing ports right now. I think that they need to to play, let's say, in with our rules, not with a different one. 
if I may, on a slightly separate subject, as you know, NATO maintains a recognised air and surface plot of all maritime and air activity, or tries to. Do you think there is a role here for trying to maintain a, ma a recognised air and surface plot of the whole of the Eastern Mediterranean? Yeah, I, be I believe that uh, they need to be part. Uh, I don't say that this country needs to be part of NATO, okay? No. And I think that it's, uh, it's not an easy task. Maybe they want to be, but uh, I don't think for, for, for the European country they will not uh, bring the other country to be part of this. Mm. But some type of cooperation. Uh, they need to be present, I believe, to, to keep, because it's very, very important, as I said, corner of the world, yeah. this gateway between Europe and uh, Far, Far East Eastern. Therefore, there, there is a big interest for the European Union, the European country, and I think that type of cooperation, the same platform that I said, let's say Egypt, Israel, Greece, and uh, Cyprus, and uh, Greece is already part of NATO, uh, together with the president of uh, uh, UK in Cyprus. Mm. And together with, with NATO, I think it was very important. And also we don't know what will happen with Russia mm. in the region. And uh, therefore, for the stability, I think that their president is very, very why. And there is a way to do it, even without being the same, uh, let's say, organization. How would this actually Like a JV be? between uh, two organizations. How, how do you think we could achieve that? What would be the, the initial action that would be taken to establish the sort of coordination you're talking about? I, I think that the establishment needs to be, first of all, to let the country here uh, to establish something between them. Yeah. And I think that right now, to make Cyprus, Israel, Greece, right. and even Egypt, it's not uh, something that's uh, not achievable. We can do it. And maybe Turkey, but Turkey is part of NATO anyway, okay? Yeah. And then this, this organization that first we need to be established, need to establish some type of cooperation with NATO. And then decide if the, if the process need to be present here or it's just ship that came and go and things like this. But I think that it's very important. I was talking about the first steps in order to get regional coordination. And I wonder if one shouldn't uh, approach it in a twin track way, that is, top down and bottom up simultaneously. Look for the political dimension, get people together and talk about it, but at the same time coordinate things like search and rescue centres, so that one could actually generate a recognised surface plot, which all nations could then feed into and take out of. Would that seem a sensible, practical first step? Yeah, I uh, I think and I, I hope that uh, I understand correctly what you say. I, I think that we need uh, to work uh, bottom up uh, yeah. right now. And uh, uh, I, if I can uh, think about the type of uh, the coordination is in, uh, let's say, uh, it's not only military. Of course. It's not only need to be civilian and military together. That means every country need, first of all, to coordinate between themselves, between the, let's say, the navies and the, uh, and the civilian that are controlling search and rescue, like uh, the bodies of the uh, transportation ministry, and then together with the joint, uh, joint body of each country to try to do it with the, with the country. I know that they already start. It's not that I'm saying something that it's uh, not possible, or, but I don't think that it's right now in the right volume. And uh, no doubt that uh, Greece, Cyprus and Israel can be the first one. And maybe Cyprus can uh, bring uh, Egypt also uh, to the picture. And uh, I believe that maybe there are some uh, political, uh, maybe if the leader will be the civilian, not the military, it will be more easy to do it. Yes. I think that, uh, let's say, uh, uh, people need to sit down and make a brainstorming. Yeah. And how, how they can uh, bypass all the political issue, the diplomacy issue, and the military issue. But there is no doubt that there is a, a 
demand for this, and uh, it's not uh, look to me not possible to do it. And you think that Cyprus would be a good first step or a first position to I begin with? Cyprus, uh, that's, largely that's, because it's um, fairly in, uh, um, uninvolved politically, and therefore is yeah. much more of a neutral country. Whereas, obviously, your own country, there would be political difficulties, or they could be. And exactly. Also, as I mentioned, also the location, like the symbolic yeah. the country, and their uh, neutral position in the, let's say, in the political arena, exactly. if they need it, they can bring to the table all the others. And then do you and think... Then you... we need to find a way to bring Turkey also, please, also it's it. But maybe that's the next stage. Establish something yeah. that's successful and shown to work, and then see if you can interconnect with Turkey and see if they were exactly. prepared to join. And then if it was really exactly. successful, get the Russians and Chinese to access it on an occasional basis. So sort of a slow step-by-step yeah. -step approach, do you think? Exactly. And you and you say, okay, first of all, you, uh, you, you, you build the cooperation, you build the rules and everything, and then you can invite others, even not a regional country, but yeah. they have interest in the area. Okay. Come to the table, let's see how can you cooperate with us. Yeah. But in the end of the day, everyone in this region that has interest in the region yeah. need to come and be part of this. This is this is my vision, let's say. I'd say it's an excellent vision, Admiral. Well done. <laughs> I wonder you. if I could uh, change the subject slightly and talk to you a little bit about the uh, immigration, the refugee problem. Do you see that as being something of big concern in the Eastern Mediterranean, or is it merely a, a bilateral problem, Turkey uh, to Greece, or perhaps uh, Libya across up to uh, Italy? I, I, I think that also uh, this uh, very, very painly uh, issue, but I think that uh, it will be better if not every country will deal it by itself. Let's say, first of all, it starts in international water. Yeah. Then it's finished yeah. in, let's say, in the, in, the, uh, in, the, <clears throat> in the water itself of the country. The, but I think that uh, uh, this is a, uh, also a very good chance to cooperate between the countries that live in the area uh, and uh, together to build the same rules, the same attitude, the same way of treatment, exchange information, and do it together. This is what I believe. This is a, this is a, you can say it's a private problem, you can say it's a regional problem. I believe that right now it belongs to the region, and the region need to deal. It will be more easy for everyone if the country will cooperate the way to treat it. In the end of the day, if you detect it in your national water, Therefore, the country need to deal by itself. But it start out of the national water. It start uh, from the country that they left. And if you are exchange information, you have the same intelligence. You know where they are, and then you can uh, share the the, the Twitter together from one center. Should it be done internationally or bilaterally? I'm thinking in particular of the sort of European aspects. I, I, I think in the end of the day, internationally. Yeah. In the end, what I believe. Yeah. yeah. It's an international problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm finished. David, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time. Chris, thank you, Adrian. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.